It's been a long time coming, but still I'm on smash. Never no breaks, I'm giving them all gas. Living for today, middle finger to pass. Also give it to the ones who thought I wouldn't last. Fake ass friends, never been family. The more I make moves, the more these niggas can't stand me. Smile in my face, but no one they wanna ban me. Make up any lie so niggas can try to hand me. Tell it to the pen and telling it to the streets. But nigga, I'm in tune with the pen in the streets. No room for defeat when you facing a real low. I ride by my lonely, so I see behind the smoke. Can't wash one hand without washing the other. Cause I'm a real keeper and my motherfucking brother's point guard of the streets. Some plays I had to change up. Nothing stay the same, remembering how I came up Dreams of a scholar Nigga bitching quarters for a dollar And hope one day I get that candy paint parlor That's the street life, East Long Beach life Never had a one track mind So I think twice, niggas think it's good shit Cause I stay on my deuces And still relevant, but you knew this Never been a game While other niggas talk it, I do this You can't make a move without a movement See I'm like a fly on the wall I can hear y'all talking The room get quiet every time I'm I walk in, center of discussion, I'm the main topic Yeah, pick that shit up, never drop it I'm on my shit, y'all can't stop it Money making moves, every dollar is a profit Respect my hustle, envy my grind I move around the clock, I don't waste my time Yes, 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 yes Good afternoon, good morning, good last night You're now tuned in to Eastside Radio with Bam Deuce Jazzy and it's your girl, Sky. And uh, today's conversation going to be about loyalty. You know, we don't do topics. We do conversations. Conversations tend to roll over, roll long, you know what I mean? So we're going to conversate about uh, loyalty and see, um, you know, is it just a word? or Do people really live by it? You know, is it something that's respected, uh, something implemented in, 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 in today's life culture? You know, is it just a word that's played with? You know, and we also have uh, one of um, the legends in here, uh, Mr. Kelvin Anderson. We're going to bring him up. World famous VIP records, you know. Uh, It's been a lot of rumors going around, so we're going to see if the rumors are are true or if it's just rumors. You know, I don't want to disclose any information that I'm not qualified to speak on. So I'm going to let him speak it once he do get up here on this platform and speak. Sounds good to me. Yeah, but how was everybody weekend, though? I had a very interesting weekend. My uh, weekend was great. You had an interesting uh, <laughs> 10 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Yeah. I see you scared to have your phone up on the <laughs> table right now. <laughs> Police fooled you over being on the phone. You, you oh, got that man. motherfucker on your knee. Oh, man. Hey, you know, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm handle that ticket. Yeah, Ooh, just wait. just pay the fine. No, nah, I ain't going to pay it. Pay the fine. Who's you on the phone with? <laughs> Cat named Bam. <laughs> he was talking you? business and got pulled over uh conversing with Lil Bam, but we gon' we gon' we gonna take care of that ticket. See the thing is if you go to court, they ask you, show proof. Can you show proof that you was on the phone with this man? Yeah. You can't I guess w- one weekend we gonna have a topic about tickets and Nah, fuck that. I don't want nothing then. I don't want none of them either. I don't want to I speak said, it up. We have a even, fundamental right to travel, and uh, I don't even want to. I don't. I don't. Cell even, phones is not in your uh, amendment rights, so we'll get into that. Yeah, some they gonna, other time. But so they I have they, a they, right to travel. I'm not a driver. So it wasn't a warning. They uh-huh. they they gave you the ticket. That's <laughs> <fuck>. <laughs> That's I know up, where you're going with that. That's cold, man. But uh, that. it really is. We gonna we gonna uh, yeah, that's get a, on this uh, that, that'll be interesting. Yeah, that'll we gonna we gonna we gonna topic. speak on that. But uh, you know what's loyalty to us as a team? What what you know what? I guess we gonna uh, come back and uh, speak on the loyalty thing. But uh, you know what? What do you guys feel about loyalty? <clears throat> and you know, is it? I I agree with you when you said that's a good question. Is it a word? Is it some people just throw out there or people know the true meaning of it? Right. And, I, you know, I've experienced some interesting things in my lifetime with that word. Sometimes we give people a little too much credit and we, you know, think that they loyal and it turns out that they not too loyal. Well, it's like right now. A lot of people just throw words around. Yeah. Love, 
friendship? I mean, once, 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 bitch start being a normal word. Oh yeah. To to females, like female, hey bitch, yeah. oh hey bitch. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, we fucked up. <laughs> you ain't lying. Because the minute you, if I said, hey bitch, oh, oh it's gonna be a whole nother story. It's gonna but, be a whole yeah. nother problem. Don't. Oof. But it's comfortable. And it's a double standard. It is yeah. a double standard. But it's comfortable. The, yeah. You know, a, a woman could call another woman mm. a bitch. Yeah. But the minute you, but then they, oh, well, you know, it's not like that. Yeah. Shit, I don't know how it is. That's true. I don't know how it is. I you totally call, agree. You call a motherfucker a bitch. You a bitch. Yeah. You bitch ass I mean, you, you, it, it, that's even with the <laughs> N-word, you know. Certain people use it comfortably, and then when somebody else uses it, we, you know, hey. <clears throat> well, that's a whole nother topic, too, but, you know. <laughs> Yeah, for real. Yeah, all yeah. kinds of different topics. Nigga. <laughs> you, 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 Y'all got to stay tuned. You got it, though. You, you got to look at it. You yeah. got nigga. Then you got Bitch. nigger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's like, I mean, certain people do shit in a slick manner. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, but now it's comfortable for certain people. You know, like now if a white boy, oh, what's up? That's my nigga. Like, he getting away with it mm-hmm. because they done threw it in the culture to where it's become a word. Mm-hmm. You know, and, 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 you know, it's what our ancestors fought for. So, I mean, I'm telling you, it's a, you could go many different directions with that. But that just go to show you even with loyalty, like the words is just thrown around now. Like, I don't even think people take it seriously. You know, you shit, motherfuckers be talking. You know, it, it, now now you meet a female, she meet a dude. They talking for like a week. The third week, they love each other. Mm-hmm. Man. Shit. Yeah. And the, the fifth week, they trying to kill each other. Mm-hmm. Then the sixth week, oh, that bitch. <laughs> 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 that bitch and then she gonna call him oh yeah that old bitch ass nigga so shit just gonna keep going back and forth man I mean nigga shit gonna get thrown out and mm-hmm. then they gonna be back together driving the car that she scratched up with bitch <laughs> on the side of it mm-hmm. <laughs> damn the so, topic damn this should be bitch up in this <laughs> motherfucker damn there's so much bitch ass shit that go on <laughs> oh man that's that's industry and in in Personal the uh, in the streets, yep. yeah. Industry and in the streets. Industry, yeah. There's a whole lot of bitch oh my ass God. niggas in the industry. Oh man, that but we, that's hey, a part hey, of we, being. We unlawful. need we need three hours for that one because we we seen some weird stuff the other night. But oh, you know, man, we gon' we gon' you know, you know this this industry is uh, totally changed. I you know uh, it's the um, you know what it's the it's the it's the era of the. Uh, let me see. What do you call that? The TBPs. Mm. That's yeah. TBPs. It's the towel boy mm-hmm. position. You know, motherfuckers yeah. will, will be a towel boy, but act like yeah. they're actual team like player. They running the. <clears throat> they running. You the a squad. towel boy, nigga. You don't even have a number. You don't have a jersey, <laughs> but you the towel boy. But he gonna make everybody outside think that he's a part of that exactly. team. That's his team. He running it. Oh he man, like, don't you see that all the time? <clears throat> Man, oh, Tom. oh yeah, you know me and my boy, we about to get on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he about to get on <laughs> to, to some bitch on. shit. <laughs> <laughs> weird stuff. Yeah, cause the the the, uh, the towel the boy <laughs> want to act like you know he's the 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 head honcho, and 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 it's 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 crazy. Man. Well, well, cause you know that. Th- well, this is the this is the interesting thing about the towel boy. The towel boy, that's the only position for him. Mm-hmm. He not he not <clears throat> athletic enough to have a Mm-mm. position on the team. Mm-hmm. He not uh, physically fit enough to be on the mm-hmm. team. He doesn't have the persona and doesn't have the the look to be on the team. So shit, only way he could be a part of the team and make the best of it is Let's go get everybody towels. towels. Exactly. Go get my shoes, nigga. <laughs> or the fool runner. <laughs> no, the, the fool runner. Yeah. yeah. And don't bring back the change. Mm-hmm. Keep the change. Be like, that's the only way they get paid, though. Yeah. Like, they not getting paid for going to get the food. Like, basically, you go get food for all these entertainers. Mm-hmm. They give you $500 to go get a $270 plate, <laughs> and you pocket the rest. But you talking or, about we own. Or they give them $500 in, 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 the, in the food <clears throat> cost. Four ninety. I notice why I don't get invited to events. Like it'd be like, you know, partners of yours that you really fuck with, and they, you know, they they fuck with this person, that person. Damn, nigga, you don't invite a nigga to no event. 
I don't, I, but but, but see, I ain't position. trying to get in free. But I, I'll pay to get in, but they don't want you to see certain shit that, that they that, doing. That real position that they hold. Yeah, the coffee. Go get them a coffee. They don't want. Mm-hmm. They, they don't want you to see that. They gonna. Oh man, it's yeah. That's that's a whole nother topic, man. That is a whole nother topic. Man, we ain't been on topic since we, we started. Yeah, we, yeah so back on the loyalty. Topics, I told yeah. you. It's a I conversation. Think, so, yeah, you so, do. So, you. so on the loyalty uh, uh, thing, I'm, I'm noticing, uh, I, 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 I'll speak on the uh, industry side of it. There's cats that come in, you know, in the game with you together. The the, the person that's supposed to be the head, you know, the, okay, he going to get the deal first or this is what the label or the or investor is looking, in, looking at. And then, you know. You have other guys that get impatient or he feel like, hey, I deserve just as much attention as this guy. Those are the tag alongs. Yeah. So I'm noticing that a lot in the uh, music side. You know, the guy feel like, hey, man, you know, why is he doing the interviews and not bringing us in? Or they want a, 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 a position that <clears throat> where they shine just as much as the, you know, the, 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 the front guy and they get impatient and they get to thinking that you know it ain't it ain't a team no more and he want to do his solo thing while the, this guy's in the process of you know pushing his thing well, it ain't no from, loyalty no more speaking man. from that part the industry side of it mm-hmm. if your team not strong before you get in the industry you're gonna have problems, you gonna have problems. Mm-hmm. but everybody <clears throat> back to the word you know mm-hmm. The, the, everything is just thrown around now. So even with team, when you have a, when you have people that say, "Oh, my team's strong," or mm-hmm. "This my team," okay, a team only really classifies two people. Mm-hmm. You can be your own team, but you know it's just going to be more stuff added on your plate. But on, only thing it takes is two people to be a part of a team. But everybody have excess people around with no position. You got a team full of players that don't even know their position. You the only one. But then you're not even a leader enough yourself to guide your other players and have them grouped up in their own position. You got to let people know their roles. Mm-hmm. It's be it be 15 people, and next thing you know, all 15 of them want to be artists. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But so, so who's Indians. control? And then you got people that come in with people, but they coming in with an objective to, oh, okay, well I'm coming in with this person. Mm-hmm. Sky sing. Oh damn, I'm finna go fuck with her now. Oh damn, Jazzy! I'm finna, cause I I seen a lot of that. People come in with certain camps and they bounce around, mm-hmm. bounce around. They over here with this person on their Instagram team, such and such. Okay, we, so but but what about that though? Why wouldn't it be? Why or why can't we have like? Okay, we got our team and we solid with our team, but we do mess with other camps mm-hmm. in a sense where it's just all friendly competition mm-hmm. amongst everybody. Because the foundation got to be set. Somewhere solid team. When well, you look course, at when you no, you know when you look at certain teams, they move as a team. Mm-hmm. You have certain people that's a, a part of a team, but they move individually. That's not right. Mm-hmm. You got to oh, move yeah. for okay, the but team. That, yeah, that's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm saying. I'm but, saying. Oh, well, clarify. I, yeah, clarify I'm, just, yourself. I'm saying like you know loyalty. Mm-hmm. Well, not really even loyalty. Just like respect in a game. Because loyalty, yeah, I feel like a lot of people are hungry, are too hungry that you can't see your team. Are you looking to step on the next man in your team? Or I know a producer right now who gives out, he'll give out the same beat to 50 people and then he'll sign a contract with all 50 of them and then decide which one he going to put out later. Like, Mm. oh, uh, whoever I feel is the hardest. I'm like, "Mm, no. Yeah, he's just a money hungry. Yeah, I'm cool. I'm cool. Yeah, he's shysty. But you you know a lot of people like that. Yeah. (laughs) Bitch ass nigga. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Yeah, 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 it's a no, lot of but, no, but no, no, not it ain't just him. It's pretty much you know, it's a it's a lot of producers that do that, but that's just to secure. I mean, I, I still don't uh, but know I'm why. I'm saying they if you that. if if if, <clears throat> if you were supposed to be working with a team, like <clears throat> I was a part of something, and you know we we making stuff for our team. And then you you take our fire tracks to whoever you want to take them to and then push it like, oh, yeah, like so you can get on real quick or so you can like switch or I don't know. I don't know. People are weird. Hold that, hold that uh, thought and we're going to. Uh, we're going to bring it back. We're going to go pay go some to, bills. Pay some bills and pay come some on bills back. and we're going to come back with uh, Mr. Some Kelvin more. Anderson himself, world famous VIP, oh, Eastside yeah. Long Beach. Be Eastside. Yeah. <clears throat> I wake 
wake up in the morning, I look self in the eye And I wonder sometimes, because self been through a lot I just want a peace of mind, just worry about me and mine I got a daughter to raise and I gotta keep her in line Now my mind don't stacking, hustle never lacking My girl think I'm macking every time I get cracking with my music It's so hard to see through it like a nightmare dream It's hard to sleep through it, now my hood on scandal This shit ramp all scandal, this shit I live for these days And nigga, know how to handle this That's why I move how I'm moving, nigga. I was raised by the streets and they matured and nigga. Now these backstabbers come in all shapes and sizes Halloween disguises You better watch who you're huffing with Anything dealing with money, they'll huff you quick I ain't got time for my right hand man going left So I separate myself from life and death I know life is a living hell I'm living in living hell As long as I'm breathing in mother uppers, I'm living swell But not really though Pockets on low status Family on low status Sitting on swell status I ain't gonna change my ways It ain't a lot it ends on my page, I'm like that phrase, I get better with age Yeah, and if the sun don't shine today, the light still gon' shine on me I got the drive for it, ear and the eye for it, two to the sky for it Family, I die for it, hood bound in 2G music, I push the line for it CD double C, and you would never get the best of me Stay low and make hits Grew up on top, ramen noodles, bacon and grits And all I did was eat, sleep and shit I never had a dime So what you work for is mine And since we black, I won't get a lick of time Cause this black on black crime The judge won't mind if I hit a girl off with a shank or with a nine I grew up with the shadies against white babies Against still spoke chucks Surviving through the 80s Then take a look at the news We catch the blues Cause all we care about is hairstyles and 22s Embarrassed Take my day off like Ferris While most of you in this get popped like Rob Harris And those of us who grew up in mischief They can't bear us I came from the bottom like the cuff on my cax It's rough on us blacks Got penitentiaries packed And they wonder why we don't know how to act uh. Yes, yes, yes. Y'all back live. Eastside Radio with Bam Deuce. Jazzy. And your girl, Sky. And we have in the studio, live himself, the big man, the big boss of the Eastside Long Beach, Kelvin Anderson, the world famous VIP Records. What's up, everybody? How's everybody <clears throat> doing today? All right, man. Thanks Pleasure. for the big invite. Oh, no problem. No problem. Man, we... um. Uh, you know, our, our conversation piece today, uh, which is something that you're very, very familiar with, is, uh, you know, loyalty. Like, you know, where do you see that word standing? I mean, whether it's from a street perspective, because you, you even real intricate on that side and in the industry side of it, like business overall. Where do you see that word standing today? Is it something that's just a word or do you feel it's something that people live by? Uh, to <clears throat> me, it's something that I would expect people to live by. Uh, Key word, expect. expect huh? Loyalty, uh, you know, I got friends and I got loyal friends. You know, I got uh, a, loyal, a loyal friend is someone that you can send to pick up your kids and stuff from school. Uh, hmm. Someone that you can um, 
actually uh, dedicate uh, time <coughs> in a situation and go on about your business and don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. So uh, loyalty is someone that you can actually depend on. And, and yeah, that, you know, uh, that's a special type of person. You know, I, I have a few of them in my life. Right. But uh, for the most part, you know, uh, it's a whole lot of thing that can stop, you know, people from being loyal to you and stuff. Money is the biggest reason, hmm. you know, uh, especially in the industry. Uh, a lot of time uh, a company might sort out a, a group, but uh, they just want the person that does the best rapping or the main producer. So, you know, they like, hey, you know, we just want you. <laughs> and uh, sometimes you have to walk away from, you know, uh, your crew to uh, get out there. Uh, mm. What's <clears throat> sometime, and sometimes that's the business, but what a law friend would do is figure out a way to reach back and grab those cats and bring them up or find a position for them somewhere. That's loyalty. Respect that. Respect that. So, I mean, that... That, that's that's funny that you even that you brought that up about money because I mean that that seemed like that's the the route and the angle that is going in now. A lot of people loyal to the money and not and you know else, really. I mean <laughs> they loyal to the money and 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 not the 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 culture where loyalty stems from. So it's just like you know before you know growing up. We respect the man for being the man. Mm-hmm. Now people respect the money and not really respect the man. They don't give a damn who you are. You know, if you're not making the money, you're not that person. So it's like that. That's what people are. They loyal to they. They loyalty don't lie in something that's that that that's that's solid. That's concrete. Something that that stands for itself. Because you know, I never seen a move. I never seen the wind. You know, move a rock. <laughs> right. Well, that's true. I mean, we saw the perfect example of loyalty uh, in the NWA movie. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. it was like, and that uh, I've seen that happen countless times in the industry. Whereas uh, when the company gets involved in a situation, then they want to figure out how many people, you know, how less a few people that they would have to pay. And of course, they want the leader to always uh, uh, control everything. Uh, you know, it was it was a lot of truth in the N.W.A. movie because uh, definitely, you know, Easy was living in a mansion at one time, and I think a couple of cats that was right next to them was uh, still staying with their parents. Right. You know, rapping on the same stage. And so I go all the way back to the Harold Melvin and the Blue Nose days. Uh, Harold Melvin was something else, man. He, uh, I remember uh, hearing the situation that even though he sung on the same stage with Teddy and the rest of the guys that, you know, they would have to actually make an appointment with his secretary to even have a conversation with him. So, you know, it was like he was the man. And so, you know, even though, you know, so that for that reason, you know, sometimes people have to uh, separate, separate themselves from the situation to move forward in life. Yeah. Now with that separation, I mean, you know, the, the little bluebird in the streets is talking and saying that, you know, you separating yourself from uh, a 33, 33 years, right? 33 uh, year relationship with uh, VIP Records. So, well, yeah, it's actually 36 years and uh, 36 years on the block, but uh, it's 43 years in the industry because I worked mm. uh, <clears throat> in retail as an employee for seven years. For my brother, Cletus Anderson, the founder of VIP Records. So, you know, that's where I got my degree in all phases of the music industry from him. And uh, actually opened up VIP Long Beach for him in June of 78. And uh, six months later, January of 79, I bought it from him. So I've actually owned it since then. So what is it that's... What what made you come to that ending point to where you just... Now is the time to because, I mean, I know, you know, we, we've been through it like even a few years back. Certain people all what you know, I mean, they even, you know, it's putting stuff in newspapers. Oh, well, you know, Calvin is shutting down, shutting down. And, you know, those was untrue. That's why, you know, this this time around, it seemed like that's what they was doing. The same thing, just 
putting something out there to make it seem as if you was going somewhere. Right. Well, this time <clears throat> it is true. Uh, three years ago when I announced that I was closing, uh, it was mainly based on the fact that, you know, business was slow. Uh, the cost of doing business was high, especially the rent on the building that I had occupied for 33 years. So uh, I was kind of forced out that time, uh, even though at the final hour I was uh, able to work out a situation with the people who own the property to just downsize okay. and you know stay in the community while I figure it out. So uh, now uh, I'm at the end of my lease. And I'm closing for a different reason now. It's some other things that I want to do in life. I think that I did basically all I could do as far as uh, being a retailer of physical product in the business. And, you know, I, I know that the industry actually crashed in 2003 mm -hmm. is when the industry actually crashed. And at that time, I could think of... Uh, at least 150 stores that I had a relationship with in Los Angeles County. Uh, now I know about four stores, and and only one of those four is a black urban store. Right. <clears throat> so uh, it's just uh, something that, you know, uh, uh, we all know now. We have a whole generation of consumers now uh, that says music is free. And right. as you all know, uh, right. if you know how to reach up there and get it, it is free. Mm -hmm. No, right. So um, with all that, I mean, far as a lot of the entertainers that came out of Long Beach, rappers, successful rappers, I mean, far as trying to keep that, you know, um, shit. I mean, as I mean, it's it's a tourist attraction, you know, for everybody. You know, a lot of people just want to come out to just just to see the sign. Just to see, you know, just to take a picture by it. So, you know, nobody's collectively coming to you to try to keep it or to see if, you know, to try to, you know, persuade you to to keep the store because it's been around for so long. You know, help with it. Well, <clears throat> I would say the most of the people that have, you know, spoke to me in that manner, uh, people who really can't do anything to help me. Right. So, uh uh, no, I haven't, haven't anyone got at me as far as like really uh, coming up with a plan to uh, keep the store going. That's crazy. That's like a Long Beach monument. Like that's like. Well, yeah, I think it's gonna be a different look. My whole life, different so. look on that corner <laughs> when that, that corner. when Man. that sign when the sign come down. It's gonna be a different look in the corner. Well, it already it's gonna, was. It's a, gonna be a, a different feeling in Long Beach altogether. Like, how many of y'all out there, for real, like, been to VIP? Like, if you're from Long Beach, it's no, no question that you've been there before. Like, so without it, it's just crazy. Like, it's crazy for me to know that it's really closing right now. It was crazy. I'm from South Central. <clears throat> and, and when the Snoop albums and the Dr. Dre's Chronic, I drove. I could have went to any store in my neighborhood, but I drove to your store to get it. Hey. Wow. I always, always had a conversation with you when I came in, but I would always come all the way from off Slauson and Western <laughs> and drive all the way to Long Beach and buy. I just felt that that was, you know, because I was buying a Snoop album. Man, I was it was home, East Side though. It's album. home, though. It's home yep. for us. That's where I, man, that's where music came to life. But it, it was, you know, it was more than a record store. Yeah. I mean, even when you, even, I'm, I'm going to let you, you know, uh, um, touch on this as far as the in stores mm -hmm. i mean just naming a couple of in stores not even a couple just naming some in stores for people for just you know people that don't know who've all who's all touched that 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 parking lot that block who's touched that in store comfortably you know what i mean when people came there they knew that they could come there with with no bullshit as far as doing the signings and i mean you know Videos. E everything, <laughs> everything took place there. But you, you can touch on the, the some of the, you know, the uh, notable people that came through. Right. Well, <clears throat> definitely, you know, all of the guys that came up through VIP, your Warren, your Snoop, your Daz, your um, Nate Dog. We had a real nice uh, in-store autograph signing situation with Nate Dog, but. Outside of the neighborhood, uh, I would say that some of the bigger one was when we had Shaq. Oh, right, right. He came to Long Beach and shut it down. 
the whole city pretty much. Mm -hmm. That was a good one. And uh, LL Cool J, mm -hmm. um, man, it's like countless um, exhibit mm -hmm. came hung out. You know, Dub C, uh, Too Short. Too Short. Uh, man, it was it was a lot of people because uh, VIP was um, the industry always used um, VIP as kind of the uh, launching ground for their developing artists. And we we always saw the uh, artists when they was R&B singers. And <laughs> like, for instance, you know, when Jaheem came out, they brought Jaheem to the store. Right. Uh, you know, they brought artists like Faith Evans and, yeah. you know, like uh, all, you know, uh, Biggie and Craig Mack, mm -hmm. you know, cool. came <clears throat> to the store. And... Uh, Independent retailers are definitely the people who actually put rap music or hip hop music, as you want to call it, on the map. Because um, back then, uh, the rec the major labels didn't didn't uh, want to touch it, and um, the chain stores didn't believe in it. So it was uh, independent retail all across the country, such as myself, that would listen to it and knew how to. Uh, I listen to a project and sell and figure out if that's something that they could sell to their customer base, their consumers. And you know, early rap music was based on music that we grew up on. You know, it was somebody rapping over James Brown or Roger Trapman. So as independent retailers, we knew that hell. You know, uh, we could sell that if it if just the music played itself. So we. Uh, you know, got behind it and, you know, really pushed it on a street level. I remember back in the day, I would uh, give the guy with the loudest system in his car or the guy with the biggest boom box, I would give him a C, uh, cassette. And he out banging it in his car at the park. <laughs> and people would ask him, man, you know, where you got that, you know, get that from? And they like, man, VIP got it. So, I mean, it just started that. That's where the fire started, and, you know, it just grew, grew, and grew. I can remember, uh, you know, <coughs> my labor reps coming in, you know, from Sony, uh, Warner Brothers, putting up, you know, uh, display material for their artists, and I'm playing something underground independent. They were like, man, you know, I wish I had something like that to work that's instead right. of this bullshit. <laughs> and stuff. But, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of how it got going from the street level and then the fact that when guys was able to get their music into one stops mm -hmm. so now uh they you know top people from the label is coming to the one stop to uh you do business and they see you know the owner of the one stop is saying man i'm moving on you know right a lot <laughs> of this independent stuff so then now the one stop want a copy of it I meant the label want a copy of it and stuff. So it just kind of grew, but without independent retail, rap yeah. never would have happened. No, you're right about that. So even so, with, with all the history that you have in the in the business, and even surviving that 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 crash, that storm when you know the mom and pop stores was leaving, the Sam Goodies was leaving, the Warehouse Musics was leaving. You survived all those errors, even even the last of the VIP chains that were there as well, because you had the one in L.A., you right. had the one in Compton, you know, and even though they went to those, it wasn't nothing like the, the, the one, basically the Mecca, you know, in Long Beach. So out of all the artists that have touched that, you know, maybe even the ones, I mean, especially from the city alone, you know, no reaching out. Nobody, you know, has contributed any type of hand to where, you know, to, to where they would want to even see it still. <laughs> yeah. that's With all know. the people that you touch, you would think right. like hearing the story or people hearing it. I mean, because, you know, fuck all of the, 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 the shit that everybody is mm -hmm. saying far as, oh, well, CDs is too high or this or that. Makes you sense. still going to go pay for it somewhere else. Right. Or you still going to. And then that's like the. You know, the, like you say, you have loyal, you even also have loyal customers. Right. To where they know and they appreciate what one is doing. You know, I mean, lights don't run for free. Right. You know, I mean, certain things don't run for free, but they want something for free. 
But right. even, I mean, like I said, just all that being said, you would think that a lot of these known artists, you know, from Long Beach would even rally up and say, hey, look, let's go help Mr. Anderson out and see what it is that he need to, what, what would make him feel comfortable? Or what, what would make him feel like, you know, what can he do? Even if he want to leave, let's keep this as as a, a, a monument, as a museum, you know, to where it won't die down. Because it's been it's been around for generations. For it ain't nothing that just been around for 12 years. You in and out, got some money and got on. I mean, shit, 36 years. Right. Well, you know, that's a question that's uh, proposed to me uh, on a daily basis. You know, where he is, uh, why haven't, uh, you know. Right. And, uh, you know, I really can't speak on that. You know, people, you know, was like, say, you know, ain't this the place where Long Beach Hip Hop was started? I'm like, of course it is. Uh, well, you know, how people came around to offer their assistance? Well, no. And, uh, can I explain that? No, I cannot explain that. I do know that all of the things that I did back <coughs> in the day, you know, uh, hooking up with Sir Jinx, who set it off in Long Beach as far as uh, setting up the studio, uh, giving direction to a couple of guys, uh, Keith Thompson and L.C. Rose, that was working for me at the time. So that's where uh, the whole situation kind of took off from. But, you know, at that time, business was, <coughs> you know, good uh you know i i, I never been rich but right. you know i've been well off so it ain't like things that i did back in the day was through uh uh grants uh through fundraising or anything it was just straight out the pocket mm -hmm. so uh, i just felt that you know after seeing the success in compton with easy and those guys and in the bay area with uh too short and those guys and stuff. I said, man, hey, I, I'd like to do something like that mm -hmm. in in the beach. So uh, hooking up with Sir Jinx and, you know, him telling me what it would take in order for him to help me do this uh, and uh, getting all that squared away, we were able to uh, uh, get it done. And, you know, uh, a lot of guys have had a successful career behind that start you know i was at that time looking at guys you know way too many guys getting killed uh way right. too many guys you know going to jail so i would figure that i would try to create a safe haven for you know young men and women to uh, hang out to uh, work on that type of craft or skills That's super cool. That's cool. okay we got a uh question from keisha thompson shout out to carson from carson she say, would you ever sell your building to Snoop Dogg? <laughs> if so, how much would you sell it for? Or is that too personal? Uh, it's not too personal. And if I own it, <laughs> uh, I would probably be there the rest of my life. But no, I don't own the property. I just own the business. And uh, the business as a music store it basically has no value. Uh, with me, the only thing that has a value is the brand. Of you know, in the yeah, the history of the store, and you know, I plan to if the situation, <coughs> if I can work this situation out, I plan to in the near future, possibly open uh, a recording studio, uh, radio station, and uh, set up a museum. Oh, so, yeah, I, I that's my plan for Long Beach if uh, the situation presents itself. Uh, I still haven't had. A meeting with key people who I feel that can really make this thing happen. Uh, I haven't had that meeting yet, but it's something that I have in my heart to do, uh, you know, to uh, kind of carry on the VIP legacy. Right. I just think it's cool. crazy, though, that nobody in Long Beach, like, is, is willing to help it. Like, everybody from Long Beach, you claim you love Long Beach so much. You put it on everything. You fight 6'2 on your stomach and everything. But ain't nobody reaching out. That's crazy. And and that's just a part of the, the, the knowing and the understanding. Like, a lot of people now, I mean, the generation that, 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 that we have now, they lost into that, that uh, education piece mm -hmm. to where they, you know, yeah. They don't know the knowledge and the history behind a lot of things. So they really basically don't. It's a lot of don't care in the in the upcoming generation. Like, well, shit, that that was before my time or certain people don't even, you know, take the time out to see 
what happened. I mean, any business you get in, you got to know the history of that business. At least be knowledgeable yourself in the business that you in. A lot of people don't do that. They yes. just jump into it. <laughs> <laughs> His stomach is loud. So. A hungry motherfucker, man. <laughs> this like, is a hungry motherfucker it's a barrel right over here. here. It's a bear on this side. <laughs> Trying to conduct an interview. This old rude stomach ass. Oh, just man. a rude motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that sounded like a bear. I bet yeah. everybody heard it. Like shit, if they say niggas don't get pregnant, they oh, lying. Man. That was a roar down there. Shit, stomach, my stomach. Yeah, I'm like, damn. I'm thinking the sound effects on the. Uh, I'm like, shit, that's cool. Sorry about that, cow. <laughs> yeah, man, you shit. It's take a, that out your check. That's a that's a natural thing. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, he natural. nervous. It's natural. Nah, but um, stomach growl. Uh, but but yeah. you know, back to that. It's it's just even even with that, because it's a lot of people that's in Long Beach that don't even know the history of VIP itself and what you know how you help employ people. Um, you know, just the people you look out for on a day to day basis. It's a lot of people that don't know that. And and really, you know, I think it's key, but that's where, you know, we lost in the community to where, you know, we would rather be, we would rather see our own without it than with it. That's crazy. Though. You know what I mean? Even within the community. And that that's that's just not cool. You got these other communities that look out for their communities. Hey, I was just saying. You know that. what I mean? But, I mean, Long Beach right now is just so lost to the point to where, you know, you got everybody that's either trying to step on this person's toes or this person stepping on their toes. And it's just like you would want to look out for, even, especially stars. Mm -hmm. This is what killed me with, with, with certain stars. You know, if you are a certain level, if, if you're an individual and you are at a certain level of, 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 of stardom, but you don't have anything in that city to where you represent, this is because I know if I'm the biggest if I'm the biggest motherfucker in Long Beach, I'm going to be just like these other moguls is out. You know, you go out to Atlanta, you could go to Dupree's or you go to Usher restaurant or, you know, ludicrous shit. Like, mm -hmm. no, when you come to Long Beach, you go in the BAM spot. Mm -hmm. You go into the you you go in. I mean, I'm a I'm a if I'm that caliber of, of, of artists, if you know what I mean? I mean, but it's just like, I don't know. Everybody don't really have it in their heart to give back where they came from like that. I have a question, Cal. Do, <clears throat> do you feel that there's people we, quote unquote, think have it financially that don't have it, but if they did have it, they would contribute and say, hey, you know what, let's make this happen. Hmm. You know, is it is it because I know we get a misconception of celebrity. Who really got right. it? Who what? really have oh, yeah. it? Right. So, you know, I'm, I'm thinking it's got to be people there that just financially don't have it, but we think they, they superstars do, yeah. and don't. You know, because it got to it's, it's I'm sitting here like losing my mind thinking that all the history and all the, you know, the sacrifice you put in yeah. for that spot. Nobody's, you know, willing to say, hey, you know what? Let's make this happen. Let's let's keep this here. Hmm. Well, like I said, <clears throat> um, I'm a little surprised that I've hadn't heard from a lot of people, really. Uh, and so, I mean, it's just something that they don't have they in their heart. To do, or uh, I don't think that um, you know. Even if someone don't have it, then there are plenty of fundraising ideas, or concept that you know. Uh, you know, in, in my family, I'm from a big family, mm -hmm. and uh, so we got point people in our family. Whereas uh, when something go wrong in the family, this point person rallied the rest of the family to look. This is what we need to do, and stuff. So. Long Beach should be like that. Long Beach should be like a family to take care of their own. It really should. And, uh, you know, but like, I, it's just, you know, I, I'm, I'm a little surprised myself that, you know, certain things haven't happened. Um, but, you know, the things that I've done in the past, you know, I, it's, I have no IOUs mm -hmm. to say that, well, you know, this person <coughs> owe me yeah. anything and stuff. Because, you know, you would figure that, in this business, you know, I always figured that my next year was going to be better mm -hmm. than my current year. So, you know, I didn't expect the industry to crash the way it did and stuff. So, you know, uh, so you know, I'm doing this out of love, out of concern, uh, caring for the neighborhood. And, 
you know, it would be good if, you know, the neighborhood turned things around. I'm not trying to save a record store, yeah. but I am trying to uh, move forward in other areas yeah. in the community that would be a benefit to the community. Exactly. I like that. Yeah, that's yeah. dope. So we're going to take a break, pay some bills, eat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For old Growly over here. Growly. Yeah, we're going to change your name, but we're going to. Eastside Radio. Man. Long beach fitted hat. New era to be exact. Hell yeah, I'm repping that. White teeth, cut off khaki shorts. Can you dig that? Just call me the shovel while I rumble with anybody. If out my diamond dollars, I'll turn them to weird bodies. Restock them shelves. I heard it from Bo Rilla. Catch me in my hood on the block with the gold digger. Every time I lay something, people say I'm a cold nigga. Cause I spit that gangster. I spit that venom. I got that Pendleton flow against the 501 denim that make you bang like 88. Bounce in the 80. So I let my 520 slide in these haters' face. This rip riding Rolando, Chuck Taylor fluid. I'm a product of that east side gang bang music. When I roll with my gangsters, cuz I keep it moving. Who that nigga out there rapping his turf? Been being branded since the day of his birth. It's Lil Bam, nigga. Who that nigga out there rapping the east and always hustle hard up in these streets? It's Lil Bam, nigga. Who that nigga out there pushing the line and bang Long Beach and all of his rhymes? It's Lil Bam, nigga. Who that nigga out there keeping it real and still got his fucking hand on the steel? It's Lil Bam, nigga. Spending license, no registration, but I'm still rolling. In the photo, candy paint, something still loking. Get it? I'm still loking, still on my lap, all black and gold. Pittsburgh still on my hat, hustle hard or go home, I ain't a West Coast rapper, I'm a West Coast factor, fuck the West Coast actors, attitude like Mike Epps, all about my Benjamins, Eastside Long Beach, Pittsburgh still a man, I roll me a cut low 13s with the white walls, about to buy my city and my motherfucking block y'all, who does it best like this young East veteran, black and gold lettering, hood bound lettering, yeah I'm back cracking, back active in the streets, never slacking, your boy backpacking in these streets, not the Kanye West, Westway. You know the Smith and Nine Westway, I even stay alert on the church day. Nigga, who that nigga out there reppin' his turf and been branded since the day of his birth? It's Lil' Bam, nigga. Who that nigga out there reppin' the east and always hustle hard up in these streets? It's Lil' Bam, nigga. Who that nigga out there pushing the line and bang Long Beach and all of his rhymes? It's Lil' Bam, nigga. Who that nigga out there keeping it real and still got his fucking hand on the steel? It's Lil' Bam, nigga. Yeah, nigga. Y'all niggas still wanna know who the fuck I am? You already know the fuck I am, nigga. Lil' Bam, nigga. Bam Deuce. Lil' Deuces. Bam Deuce Bigelow. Whatever the fuck you wanna call me, nigga. Eastside Long Beach. For all y'all little suckers out there, I'll let y'all get y'all shine for a minute. But I'm taking that shit back, nigga. Lil' Bam. Eastside motherfucking Long Beach, nigga. Holla at me or get at me. Deuce, deuce, deuce. All right, and we're back. Eastside Radio. Eastside. This is Bam Deuce. Jazzy. Sky. And, you know, we conversating about loyalty and the... And the lack of it in Long Beach. Well, in the history of it. The lack of it just all around, period. (laughs) The lack of it in our... And, 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 uh, you know, we finally, you know, put a hash to the rumors, you know, about uh, VIP coming to a set closing and, you know, the... The man himself has announced it that you know it is it is going away. So um, I mean, even with that, are you doing anything, you know, uh, at the store like far as you know uh, sales or I mean, or are you just maintaining business until you 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 out of there? Well, I'm doing business as usual. Uh, we will still be. My plan is to uh, still be accessible to the community as far as their musical need. Mm-hmm. Uh, via our uh, website, which is worldfamousviprecords.com. Right. Yeah. The phone number that we've had for 36 years would still be useful, uh, 562-591-2349. Had to keep that for all of the guys in prison because they all, oh, man. everybody no. know that number. Everybody know, <laughs> man, no. That everybody <laughs> knew that number, man. I mean, you was getting people. I mean, that was a... And see that that's see man, see that that's that's what baffles me right there. You know what I mean? It's because you know it was it was homies that couldn't even call on they, you know they mamas or, you know well call they mama house excuse me or, um, call they boy house or they woman whoever. I mean they called, 
the VIP to get in touch with that's everybody cool. out the streets. That's cool. Because that's how in tune like VIP was with the streets. That's cool, man. So you would expect that. I mean, it's just you know, with me, you know, I guess it's the expectations as well too. I know I'm I'm like that. I I well, I used to be like that. The way I give, I expect it giving back to me. But you know, we 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 have those ex- expectations about others that they don't really know we have of them. You know what I mean? And and, and we can get pissed off that they don't, you know, uh, fulfill those expectations. They're not even aware of. And yeah, exactly. But at the same time, you you know, they say lead by example. So you would expect the things that you do and you see. I mean, I know it's going to come back to you because certain people look at it from a certain standpoint. Like, oh, well, did you help Snoop Dogg or why he not helping you? Or did you help Warren? Why he not like they look at the that part of it when it's really a bigger picture outside of that, you know, far as even community based. Like so, you know, it's not really about the artists themselves. Not it's just the contribution that you had. You would expect it. With certain people, like I mean, you 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 know this where you from too, right? Well, I mean, you know, it's like I didn't receive anything when when I wasn't in in needs, you know, over all these years, and so right. you know, I'm not too too surprised that uh, you know it's the way it is. A little surprising, but uh, you know, it's just you know that's the nature of 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 you know the individual, the, the, of course, the invi- individual. And, uh, you know, it's something that, you know, I can't carry that around, you know, as far as that's just extra weight on you when you carry around, you know, a situation like that. So I just got to keep it pushing, moving forward, uh, you know, because it's, uh, you know, it's still you got to live your life. And, uh, I, you know, I'm going to continue uh, to uh, do all that I can, you know, for people in the Long Beach community, you know, artist wise. It's never been a better time for artist now that launches career because of social media and the internet you know it's an even playing field now right uh, you know you don't have to uh, forget forget about getting a record deal and yeah, stuff majors, because you know, uh, you know they only going to sign you if you got a billion friends and if you got a billion <laughs> friends you don't need nobody exactly so uh exactly you know it's, it's <clears throat> now is the time you know to uh uh you know get it cracking get busy a lot of people ask me should i still press up a physical cd of course you should because that's something that you should have a part of your package when you go out and perform people like you then hey you can sell your cds or you need it for your website until they extinct until cds are fully out out the picture hey go press them up now you don't do the large volumes oh yeah that 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 people used to do but you know just Keep them in, in, in small increments, and, and you know, and work it like that until they just fully out the out 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 of play like a, a cassette tape. And he said the key word too. He said sell your CD. Right. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm right. kind of old school. Cal. I'm, I feel like because I've been around for a long time. As far as I feel like if an artist really have confidence in his music and he feel like he got fans, he can sell his CD. I just I I, I would rather like to see an artist go see back you. to selling singles, press up. You know, singles some singles cool. and pass out singles, you know, because the, the life expectancy for a mixtape in today's music hours. is 24 hours. Right. So, you know, yeah, so. but even even with that, the single is just to reel them in mm-hmm. to you. To you know what I mean? Because content. a lot of people, you know, they'll put a big album together and it'll be 15, 16 mm-hmm. songs. And it's only one song on there that you mm-hmm. like. So I just paid for a, a CD, but I'm I'm basically paying for one song that I like. So if I pay ten dollars for this CD, you rip me off and charge me ten dollars for your single. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've never known a single for to be ten dollars. <laughs> but see, that's it, some it, shit. It seems like hip hop, what we call <laughs> urban music. Yeah, it's it's about seven it rock and roll. Diamond. I like rock and roll. I like rock music. Right. Every rock and roll artist. They have the mindset of selling their music. They go on the road. Every they get rock and bands. roll artist is yeah. balling. They do not yeah. give away. Mix. Well, when you well, go, when the, you go to difference. their, when you go to their shows, they have merch set up and they're selling. They might give out a single, that, you know, mm, on, on, one, and one anything single. that they're handing out is one song. See, I feel like our our hip hop, our our rap, is it, flooded. Yeah, no. It's flooded with everybody making music. So little June June, man, it's four year old June June. Man, for real. Like, that still wore the diaper, but he four. 
<laughs> he got the snot and everything. <laughs> hey, Mumbling but, something. I think we lack the knowledge business wise <clears throat> because any real mm-hmm. R&B, uh, uh, gospel, jazz, blues, not, mixtape is not in their vocabulary. It's just us. It seems to me when you say mixtape, you depreciate your content. And yeah, I always you do. say it's like going to a Mercedes Benz car lot, mm-hmm. bringing the car home and popping the emblems off of it and putting Honda Accord on it. Because right. you now they're not doing mixtapes. Mixtapes back in the day were previous previously released instrumentals right. where and a that's rapper rapped over a Run DMC or a UTFO right. or a, a Houdini instrumental. Right, right. And then a DJ would do his thing <coughs> and give it out. That's a mixtape. Right. But somehow in today's music industry, some rapper rapped over original music original lyrics and, and call it a, a mixtape mix and depreciated the value of an EP or an album. album yeah. Those are not mixtapes. Those are albums and EPs that they're giving away. Right. I tell guys all the time, I'm like, man, <laughs> do not, I'm like, I'll be, you know, they bring in a project for me to listen to. I'm like, are these uh, somebody else's instrumental or did, did you, and they, when they tell me that, I'm like, man, why? Mm-hmm. Why? I mean, the purpose of a mixtape, yeah, man. I take the hottest cat out there and mm-hmm. and 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 put down some bars over his mm-hmm. track and mm-hmm. give that away because uh, what you're trying to sell is yourself. Exactly. You're not necessarily trying to sell your production. You gotta trying to get somebody to feel you, mm-hmm. and once they feel you, they assert you out. Yeah, you and, they gonna, and they gonna and they gonna follow you, right? Content. Yeah, but yeah. see that that just comes with the the respect in it. The, the respect that they have in that business. Because if you sit there, like she was saying, too, it's oversaturated. Because you got, you got artists, okay, yeah, they ready to just go jump on anything. They don't mm-hmm. care if it's mixed. You hear the toilet yep. flushing in the background. <laughs> no a mix, spoon no done fell in the Mama! sink. It's like you're hearing all that on the track. But they like, man, this. And they, I mean, they don't even have enough respect for their own artistry on what they putting out. And it's like, damn, that's why, like, we don't have a, a, a community within the, within the rappers. Because, see, like he said with rock, rock reminds me of jazz, I mean, not jazz, excuse me, gospel. Because mm-hmm. they have followings. Mm-hmm. And it's people that, I, that you would never hear of, that you probably never heard of in gospel. But when you do hear of them, be like, damn, they living good. Yeah, because and everybody in their congregation yeah, buy they, it. Because they have a following. See, it's different from having followings and fans. Because you have a fan base and you have a fan. A fan base is going to follow you. Yeah. Then you got people that just waiting for the mixtape to come out to get or a CD to come out to get it for free. Right. If you got a people, real fan is going to drive to San Diego. No, right. They're going right. to buy your merch. Not just wait for yeah. you to come on Sunset. Yeah. We, we, we there's, there's no loyal fans anymore, you know. But, and, and, you know. I mean, in, in closing, like far as with the VIP, if you got anything that you want people to... Uh, know of the vip like how would you want vip remembered far as the legacy on it like what would you tell people that's listening like on on how how you know basically the integrity of, of vip well i'm vip i mean you know i started in the la area and kind of moves around different sections <coughs> of la before i even came to long beach but uh vip uh for many many years has been you know we have generations of consumers uh, that we service over the years, and you know, uh, I picked up the artist development situation from my brother Cletus, who did the first ever Ice T record. Right. You know, it's a lot of cats. Uh, he was very involved with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis uh, entry into the business and stuff. So I kind of picked that up from him and just carried it to Long Beach, and 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 so. I had a reason for doing the things that I did in Long Beach. It was just part of my DNA. But, you know, I see we're running out of time. But in closing, yes, VIP final days is December 31st as far as the store is concerned. But you still can find us on Facebook, uh, World Famous VIP Records, on right. website, worldfamousviprecords.com. Email address is viplb at aol.com. Also and hit up Eastside Radio, yo. Facebook, right. Eastside Radio, and Instagram. Instagram. East, uh, what is it? Talk Eastside Radio on Instagram. Hit us up on Instagram. Yep, yep. Talk Eastside Radio. Talk Eastside Radio. Yeah. yeah. Hit me See up too, week. Blue as the Sky. Bam Deuce. <laughs> Jazzy Management. Hey. <clears throat> Raised in the slums, 
nigga, a little grimy ass nigga, spoke stiller, so you know where I'm from, and you know I got my chest out, I'm on my paper route, go on that step out of line, then bring your best out, we on the west, motherfuckers, gangster, and them east side, Long Beach niggas is bangers, the hood die young, that don't mean I'm in a rush for it, it's like a blunt, so you better take a puff of it, you had enough of it, where this shit gets crazy, and now everywhere you go, you're in danger, and you gotta keep a heat on you, preferably a lean on you, registration license, cool the black and white, so be up on you, so where my shit, hell no, I can't have that, no rub on my hips, cause enemies get the bear back, feeling that it's hot lead, and it make them bounce like the South Bands, when I see them do they bank yeah. any nigga want problems, then I'ma give it to them. Niggas running they mouth, then I'ma give it to them. Don't start no shit, won't be no shit, cause you don't want this shit, motherfucker. Any nigga want problems, then I'ma give it to them. Niggas running they mouth, then I'ma give it to them. Don't start no shit, won't be no shit, cause you don't want this shit, motherfucker. Gang banging ain't a hobby, it's a Long Beach ritual. Taking all fades is the motherfucking principle. Respected by my hustle, in the hood bound muscle. Thank God for the struggle, cause your boy about to bubble. I slide down the block where the haters be at, so they can see around.